Hello everyone! Before I continue, just a heads up. Spoilers ahead. As the title says, we are going to be talking about the war within Alpha, Beta and beyond. Just keep in mind, spoilers are a go. The war within Alpha has officially begun, as well as presentations and promotions. In this video, we'll go over my first impressions and later down the line, we'll be diving much deeper into systems, storylines, speculation, all the good stuff that comes with a brand new expansion. The first thing with the alpha that stands out is the warband feature. We're unable to use our own accounts right now, but that doesn't stop us from seeing what they've been cooking. You can select a few of your favorite characters across the different servers, and they're gonna be sitting around the campfire on your login screen. Different classes with different transmogs, your warband represented and easily swapped around. That's the initial login screen feature, as the real impact that lies within what the warband actually is. Warband is simply another word for account-wide. Account-wide reputations, more flexibility on the transmog system, easier to swap around between your characters and not having to worry about the individual progression, as basically that is what Warband means. Nearly everything is now account-wide. Logging in right now on the Alpha offers a bit of a broken experience story-wise, so as with all things, please keep in mind this is Alpha Beta stuff, things are subject to change and might not be what they seem. Now what seems to be going on is that in the pre-event, we go to Syllabus to follow up on that intro cutscene, to follow up on the voice that people have been hearing, as Rolf is calling out to them. And so what else is there to do but to go talk with its speaker? Along the way, Jaina drops a rather interesting nugget. Locust Walker told us that the people of his home world once received a vision not unlike the Radiant Song. And then Karesh felt a shadow. By the time the Ethereals realized their world was warning them of the coming danger, it was already too late. We cannot allow the same thing to happen on Azeroth. Her voice is apparently trying to warn us of things to come. And it opens up the question whether or not Karesh, homeworld of the Ethereals, is that one contained the world soul like Azeroth does. A world soul that tried to warn them of the coming of Dimensions the All Devouring, the tragedy that followed. Now Magni hasn't been doing too great. In a parallel to Enduin, he is struggling with his gift, his connection to Azeroth, where once his sacrifice of going through an ancient ritual, a ritual to communicate with the land, instead becoming one with it, resulting in him becoming the King of Diamonds and Speaker of Azeroth during Battle for Azeroth, when all was said and done, what was there left for King Magni? He is still a diamond encased, he can't feel the warmth of his skin, and he's not exactly on speaking terms with Azeroth, but for us, he is willing to give it a go. Now her voice is so overwhelming that it actually hurts him. Anduin can't heal the wounds, and so the King of Diamonds is brought to Dalaran, where surely they can help him out. His daughter Moira and grandson Dagran are also hanging out in the city, visiting Bran and staying at dear old dad's side. In the meantime, across the world, Azeroth is remembering past events, which I think is the pre-event. We hit blobs of memory, which causes enemies of the past to attack. Once the blob is defeated, little events spawn across the zone, in which you need to do different things to complete it. Like, I came across one where I had to kiss a whole bunch of froggos. I think the idea is that we're reliving a bit of Azeroth's greatest hits, member berries, until the war within Alicia's, and it starts off with quite a bang. Now please, please keep in mind that during the Q&A and the presentation, they made quite a big deal out of keeping the details a secret. We're not supposed to know exactly what happens, but here is my interpretation. Dalaran gets f***ing destroyed. A blazing comet is going to streak across the sky. As we on the ground, we need to deal with Nerubians and Zalatas void magics across the city. Kedgar, in a desperate attempt to give us a chance at life, then sacrifice himself. He is now f***ing dead. The magical city, all that's left are tiny little bits on the ground, and there's a couple of survivors. Now how is that for an expansion start? That is what I'm talking about. Some action in this expansion. I can't wait to see the actual details on this one. Now the reason why I think that this is the way that it goes down is because our fall is described by one of the NPCs as a meteoric fall. Katgar's demise is mentioned in an active cutscene through Let's Take a Moment for Katgar, and Zalata's presence is all but confirmed due to Illyria. She is absolutely pissed on the hunt for the Harbinger of the Void, and she wasn't able to find her amongst the rubble and wreckage, which makes me think that Zalatov was physically in the city. 
Makes sense, connecting it to the cutscene that we've had with Illyria, hearing a different song compared to the others, a song more connected to the void. So that is how we get the Kas Algar, the name of the entire zone, where currently only one area can be tested, the first one, Isle of Dorne, and the adventure is away. We'll dive deeper into the story soon enough. But so far, it's it's been what I expect of Warcraft story. You meet some new enemies, you meet some new allies, you figure out what they're about, how we can get them to our side, or how we wipe them out. There's already been one side quest, which has kind of blown me away in quality, so hopefully that's going to be the standard for more. Per usual, music, voice acting, and cutscenes, they'll really work towards elevating the experience, but so far it's been rather good. Yeah, what, what I've come to expect of Warcraft. One thing I did ask during the Q&A was if they were going to do anything to help people catch up on the story so far, get people familiar with these characters. You watching this video, you're most likely familiar with the story of Warcraft, but the history is quite deep for new players to dive into, and the story from War Within, the story of the World Soul Saga, it is built upon past events, like the Sword and Silithus, like Anduin's trauma during the Shadowlands. Now, fortunately, they didn't have a direct plan to address this, but at the same time, they did say that they're aware of the problem internally. It's something being discussed. It's something being developed, I suppose. So myself and other lore channels on YouTube will be at your service. If at any point that you want me to dive into a certain subject, shoot me a message. I'll be more than happy to oblige. One thing that I have noticed as a nice quality of life are a lot more stay a while and listens. The options to have a character explain more about their history, like you can ask Moira about her relationship with her father, or there's an Irvin that explains more about the past of the last thousand years. It's available for those that care, but entirely ignorable for those that don't, and it adds immersion, knowing who you're looking at. Another nice quality of life thing, that would be dragon riding or dynamic flying as they now call it. It is here to stay and available for nearly every single mount that we've collected so far. You can easily toggle between the two versions, but in the new zones we only have dynamic flying to begin with. Not until we unlock the War Within Pathfinder. Now one of the things that they showed at BlizzCon that was how they developed the tunnel system going down. Going deeper into the different areas and how they made sure to make it a smooth transition. And while we can't go into the next zone quite yet, the sense of gliding down, it's really cool already. What else? What else to talk about? Oh yeah, there are the Delves, of course. Brand new content added to the game. Uh, the Delves are part of the leveling experience, so that you know what it's about. And then, throughout your questing, throughout exploring the zone, you come across more Delves to dive into. So far, I would compare them to the scenarios from Mr. Pendaria, in the sense that you go in, a mini story plays out, you grab some rewards, and then you go out again. You can go in alone, or you can go in with a group of friends, but at your side, there will be a companion. During Season 1, this is gonna be Bram Bronzebeard, helping you out in whatever role you'd like him to be. A first impression for the Delves, uh, it's currently based on level 2 difficulty, while there is one more level high above this. So far, I've enjoyed one of them once to see the story, but they haven't really offered a challenge yet. Perhaps that's gonna happen at level 3. Perhaps that's not the point. Perhaps this is something you're just supposed to be able to get through. But considering that there are going to be rewards attached to this, rewards in the form of gear, in the form of your weekly vault, I'm curious to see how it's going to develop further. I'm curious to see what rewards versus difficulty they have in mind. Because I remember what difficulties they had back with Mr. Pandaria and the scenarios. Um, but so far, I've enjoyed myself quite a bit, and you can see that technology of having NPC supporters, it develops ever further. They've added follower dungeons in Dragonflight, this is going to continue forward into the War Within, meaning that you can run dungeons solo at your own speed, you can explore the dungeons and story to your heart content. I also asked them during the Q&A if this is something that they're looking at implementing for the raids, and so far the answer is, let's see how the follower dungeons work out. Speaking of dungeons, two are available for testing right now. The Rookery and Cinderbrew Meadery. Both solid dungeons, especially the Meadery is a lot of fun if you're into puns. We peek a small glance into the dungeon journal. It shows us the raids that are coming up. The Rubar Palace, and I can't wait to dive in here. The way that they describe the kingdom during BlizzCon, as in the Nerubians building upon older versions of their kingdoms to then expand their empire. 
they were beaming during the presentation as they were talking about this place, as they were talking about the Nerubians not just being this monster race, but this glorious empire hidden underneath the world. They were on par with the Night Elven Empire at some point. Was it not for the Titans locking away the old gods? Who knows what the Nerubians and Azeroth might have looked like? Now, going into this raid and, and the, the emboss room, how they described it, how we're going to go up and, and the spider webs and whatnot, I, I can't wait to see this play out. The final thing to talk about, that would be the hero talents. Uh, we've done an interview on this before, and since then the talents have received quite a bit of feedback, which they have implemented, and I know that this is something that they're still working with. Now that we're rolling into alpha beta, more people are going to get a chance to test out how it works, let the developers know what they think. A similar thing was asked about the story delivery, about the pacing, how people are experiencing it. They are looking for feedback. Alpha is going to invite more people in waves, and I believe Beta is guaranteed with a pre-order, something like that. But yeah, that's um, that's my initial first impression for the War Within Alpha, and honestly, I'm just over the moon to see how epic the story is going to begin. That's been one of my major hopes, seeing an eternal balance between these epic, explosive moments and the emotional ones. Blowing up Daladan is definitely a moment that people are going to remember, wonder what other crazy stuff they're cooking with. But yeah, like I said, more content to come, deep dives into the story, speculation, all the good stuff. If you've got questions, by all means, leave them in comments, find me on Discord, I also have Twitter or Twitch. And thank you very much for watching, everybody. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time, see ya!